Well, it's been over six months since I've done an update on this project, so I figured I'd do a quick video to talk about the progress and what's been going on. It's been pretty slow, but definitely some progress. So this is the new vertical test stand. This is the same stand as before. Just before we had it configured for horizontal, and now it's configured for vertical, because I have all the flight hardware down below. So this is a thrust takeout structure, which takes the thrust out of this cylinder up through here, through that load cell, and into this upper structure. Yeah, I've put it under about 70 pounds of force and it handles it just fine, not much flexion. Um, so when we come down here, you can see the COPV on the inside of there. And then there's an adapter ring here and then this big black cylinder is actually all 3D printed as one part. It's 24 inches tall, six inches on the ID. Uh, it <laughs> took like five days to print that uh, on my printer. And then this, it's just some thermal couple wires. We'll get to that in a second. Um, come down here, there's some wires right here, which are heater wires for the COPV. They actually heat the outside of the COPV to get the CO2 to the temperature and pressure that we want for the test and make sure they may remain stable during the test. That will actually be on there during flight as well. Um, up inside here, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it. There's actually a bunch of uh, custom metal parts inside there, titanium. Uh, grade 6 and grade 4 titanium parts that have been machined and welded together to make the special manifold and the fluid riser that goes up inside the tank. Um, connected to one of those ends of the manifold is this uh, quick connect for fill and drain of the carbon dioxide uh, into the tank. And then um, there's the ball valve back there. And you've got another part of the manifold is connected to this pressure transducer, which monitors the pressure uh, inside the tank, which will never get over a thousand PSI. And then down here, there's another pressure transducer right here, which comes down and monitors the expansion chamber pressure. And you can actually see, I, I have this gimbal hooked up right now. It's actually powered up. Um, let's see if we can get that level again eh, good enough so uh, there's a couple other wires here so there's the gimbal wires that I just uh, actuated um, so those are turned on for the test I'm about to do and then these other wires are for the servo on the ball valve for throttle control and you've got these thermocouple wires which are actually super important for both test and flight they are at two points inside there they're at uh, 25 and 75 percent they tell me both fluid level and temperature of the fluid while we're heating so I can monitor the temperature and the pressure of the fluid itself both during uh, heating on the pad as well as uh, during flight I can monitor that and then relay that information to the ground or back to the computers um, for thrust control and other various things good to have the information so that's pretty much that uh, if you come down here here's the thruster itself so again this is 3d printed um, on a SLA printer uh, form labs out of a rigid 4k the pressure inside here gets up to about 600 psi when it's running this part is printed um, got that printed for me out on a SLS machine out of uh, nylon so it's super strong uh, there's bearings and everything up here the old uh, videos you saw online uh, those didn't have any bearings in there but I, this new design uh, which is one of the flight designs has uh, actual bearings and shoulder bolts and you know it's actually properly designed before I was trying to get away without that um, and what I'm doing right now is I'm testing uh, thrust calibration so both testing the load cell up top and making sure everything can handle the thrust so you can see a uh, power supply back here my camera will focus on it power supply back here that's running the servos right now so make sure the servos can handle that amount of force when they're running uh, there's a voltmeter back there which is monitoring the output of my load cell so I can calibrate it and make sure that it it makes sense uh, that's just power supply running the the load cell amplifier and it's honestly just a fl hydraulic floor jack pushing up on a scale which then has all this stuff teared out and just a, a piece of PVC pipe things don't always have to be complicated and that just pushes up on there like that and it simulates the thruster firing and creating thrust um, 
so that I can push all that thrust up into here and it actually comes into this structure, follows the outside of the structure up through this load cell and out. So yeah, that's the update on how the project's going. I hope in the next uh, two to three weeks, depends on how busy things are, next two to three weeks, I'd love to fire this thing up and get some data, both static without gimbling and then with gimbling, uh, and then do some full duration test and see how far uh, I can go with it and what, how much thrust I can get out when everything's running in its flight configuration. But except minus this thing on the outside, everything on the inside, it's all flight ready. That's what will be used for the first few test flights, which at this point, uh, I'd probably look at um, March or maybe a little bit later than that for the first flight. We'll see how the testing goes. But thanks for following the project.